Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so glad to be bringing God's truth to you today. Praise God. Now, before we go into today's broadcast, can we call for that daily bread? I don't know what you're expecting today, but listen, have the attitude of expectation and God is surely going to visit you. Are we ready? Make this declaration with me now. Say, Father, I receive right now my daily bread. It's coming to me now in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Now then, I've been sharing with you, on, on, and I read a scripture to you, First Ephesians chapter 1 from verse 15. Now, we, we, we stopped at verse 17 and for two days. I've been explaining some things to you. Now, I'm going to read verse 17 again. Paul was praying for the brethren here. And this is what he said. He said that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Verse 18 says, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened. I want to read this from the Amplified Version. The Amplified Version. I'm going to read from verse 17 again. For all, for I always pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, that he will, that he may grant you a spirit of wisdom and revelation, of insight into mysteries and secrets in the deep and intimate knowledge of him. Now look at verse 18. That's where we're going to this week. By having the eyes of your heart flooded with light. This is where a lot of believers don't get it. If you understand this statement, you will pray this prayer every day for the rest of your life. Because this is where people are brought down. This is where people are taken up. It says, by having, by having the eyes of your heart flooded with light. Do you know what it means? to have your, the eyes of your heart. Now he says, the eyes of your heart. What are the eyes of your heart? So your heart have eyes. You think he's talking about these eyes? No. See, these eyes are given to you to look, not to see. You don't see with these two eyes balls in front here we call it eyes but you don't see with them you look with them now i need you to understand this you don't see because you're looking you know i mean practically now this 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 you you can relate with this you know someone is 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 looking at you and you just feel, why is this person staring at me? Why is this person staring at me? And then you're bold enough to ask, sorry, why are you staring at me? And it's like, I wasn't staring at you. You were staring at me. No, I wasn't staring at you. But you were. Not because the person has some eye defects. No. Person, but you were like, oh, no, 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 sorry. My, my mind was not there. I was thinking of something. But he was looking at you, but he wasn't seeing you. See that now? See that now? So, so he can truly say, I wasn't staring at you. You know why? Because he wasn't seeing you. But he was looking in your direction. See that? So how? See, he was looking in your direction. But the object of his sight or the, the mechanism by which he sees wasn't in your direction. So we see by the eyes of our hearts. He 
You've heard people, you know, what is wrong with you? Can't you see? And I, oh, sorry, 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 sorry. I wasn't looking. <laughs> and I, sorry, sorry, I wasn't looking. But they were walking. And they were, their eyes were not closed like this. So the, the right thing to say is not, I wasn't looking. The right thing to say is, I wasn't seeing. See, because you're looking at something, but you're seeing another thing. I needed to understand this. Now then, he, we, we, we see according to the light that the eyes of our heart is exposed to. That is what we see. And that is how we see. You remember Jesus spoke and said, the eyes, the light of the body is the eyes. Now, when he said the eyes, you are thinking he's talking about this. No. He was talking about the eyes of your heart. So, the heart. Now, when he says the heart, he's not talking about the heart that's pumping blood. He's talking about your mind. Your mind has eyes. So, now, you see things according to the measure of light your mind is exposed to. Now, this is why sound teaching is very important. You know why? And, and, and this thing. You know, I pray the Holy Spirit help you understand this thing once. I pray truly, truly, what Paul prayed, I pray that he will flood the eyes of your heart with light. Now, which light? His light. Because, you see, let me read John chapter 1. Let's go to John chapter 1. It's, it's very relevant that I read this to you now. Praise God. Now I'm reading from verse, now you know from verse 1, he says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and then all things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. I'm reading the book of John, St. John now. And verse 4 says, In Him was life. In who? In the Word was life. So the Word lives a life, right? And then he says, in him was life, and the life was the light of men. He leads a life, and the life he leads is light to men. And then he says, and the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness does not comprehend it doesn't understand it doesn't understand all right let me read the amplifier says for the darkness has never overpowered it put it out or absorbed it or appropriated it and is unreceptive to it now that's how powerful this light is which light the light that comes from the living of the word who it's Jesus. Are you getting it now? So now it says, in, in him was life. That means he lived a life. The way he lived, the way he operated, the way he did his things. That was the life that he was living. And that life became the light of men. But you see, it's not everyone or it's not every man that operates by this light. You need to understand that. And this, no, 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 watch, watch. Hmm. Now, verse 7 says, let me go back to the New King James. Now, verse 6 says, There was a man sent from God whose name was John. This man came to bear witness, to be a, this man came for a witness, to be a witness of the light. Watch this now. He came to be a witness of the light. Okay, it says that all through him might believe he was not that light. John was not that light. Now, there's a reason he said this. Remember, he says 
He lived a life, in him was life, and the life was the light of men, right? Now, he was specific to say here that John was not that light. So don't look at John to find the light. Thank you, Lord. He was not that light, but was sent to be a witness of that light. So he was sent to say, hey, this is the light. I'm telling you, this is the light to follow. All right then, it says, that was the true light which gives light to every man coming into the world. So the light that Jesus gives is available to every man coming into the world. Yet, many don't follow or have received this light. It's not hidden, yet many don't follow his light. And when you don't follow his light, what happens to you? You walk in darkness. Jesus in John 9 said, as long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Now, how does he live as light of the world? How, how does he how does he function as light of the world? By the life that he lived. Now that's the reason you find Jesus saying, I don't do anything of my own authority. As I hear, so I speak. He said, the father that dwelleth in me, he does the works. So you see me do anything because my life is supposed to be the light of every man that comes into the world. Because of that, I have to be conscious to live the true life that will show the light. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Now then, Paul praying says that the eyes of our heart be flooded with light. Now, I told you, you see by the light in your heart, not with these two eyes. You see by the eyes of your heart. And those, the eyes of your heart see according to the light that it is exposed. And I'm telling you, you are controlled by what you see. So, you see... <laughs> You, you can be, for example, a believer, and you've been a believer for so long, and you love God, you're a man of faith, you've, you've, you've heard the word of God preached to you, you've, you've, seen, you've seen things happen when you demonstrated faith. Now, do you know if you condition your mind, for example, to begin to expose it to demonic activities around you, and you begin to listen to messages on how powerful demon spirits can be. Soon, you will begin to see things through their lights. And then now, you begin to explain everything from that light. And I'll tell you the truth, you will see manifestations that will convince you See that now? You will begin to have dreams that will convince you that you have a problem, first of all. And number two, that your problem is from your great, great grandfather who used to be something. <laughs> Praise God. And you will believe it. And so what do I do? Okay, you need to go for deliverance. And you know those deliverance, they never end. See that now? And funny enough, you can go for that deliverance and, and you begin to cough out stuff and cough out blood and cough out different things. And then you feel, oh, I'm free. I'm free. But you know what? They never get free. If you've been around those people before, you realize that they never get free. And you know what they begin to say? Then they begin to look for something, a weakness in you and begin to blame for your never being able to be free. All that 
thing, all that experience is all simply because of the light that you have exposed the eyes of your mind to. If we stand in the place of the true light, I can boldly tell you they are all lies. Are there demonic spirits? Yes, there are demonic spirits. Are they the reasons for your problem? No, they are not the reasons for your problem. They are not. They are. No, pastor, you don't understand. You don't understand. You don't know the dreams I used to have. I don't know the dreams that you used to have. But I can tell you this. The dreams that you used to have have no bearing or have nothing to do with your experience in life. And you know one thing also, I told you that a bit, I told you a bit of that last week. You can shut that dream if you don't like it. It's in your power. We'll talk about that tomorrow. Praise God, because our time is up. I pray that the eyes of your mind today, let it be flooded with the true light. Let it be flooded with the true light. That you will come out of every darkness that have existed in your life. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Now, if you are in the city of Abuja, I will invite you for a program tomorrow. We're having a special program tomorrow and we invite you to come with your prayer request i'm going to be ministering to different kinds of people and so i would like you to join us and then if you are not in abuja you can also join us online the information is on your screen i want you to join us and let's have a great time of fellowship tomorrow god bless you i'll see you tomorrow bye